Hello everyone, this is Zook and today I'm bringing you another arts and crafts video. Why? Because of the overwhelming success that my first one had. I was actually really surprised to see how many people like that sort of stuff. I personally thought uh, nobody would give a shit. I thought crafts was dead. But fortunately, my subscriber base proved me wrong. Unfortunately, however, uh, it's a shame that not a lot of people take active interest in this sort of thing and, you know, find out what... Uh, other stuff there is out there, you know, most people settle with Harlem Shake and stupid memes and bullshit on YouTube. I mean, there's plenty of really good, interesting uh, content out there, including like documentaries and full shows about all sorts of stuff around the world. So yeah, that's that's what I browse. <laughs> I don't browse uh, Minecraft and whatever stuff. Um, anyway, this is going to be another type of uh, sketchbook or whatever kind of book you would want to make. Uh, in a completely different style than from the first one. The first one used glue. It used uh, a pretty complex way of making it. It was like a legit book. This one is going to be a Japanese Japanese stitch binding a notebook. And I think it's based off of the Japanese way of making books. I'm not entirely sure. But w what's certain is that no glue is used for the pages. Like it's a very simplistic style of notebook. And anyone can make this sort of thing. Uh, basically what you do is... And just sew it, sew it, that's it. Um, what I'm using there is a Japanese hole punch, which is basically a sort of device that has a rotating mechanism with a hole puncher at the end, which rotates when you press down, so it's pretty easy to uh, punch precise holes and stuff. It doesn't work with very thick materials, like that type of cardboard, it barely goes through it. But like three or four pages, and you can, you can get a pretty precise um, punch. So this one is going to be with a leather cover. I decided to see how it, that would go. But what I'm doing right there is uh, like thinning out the uh, edges because when I glue them on the back of the cardboard, I don't want them sticking out and being too predominant. So I grabbed an X-Acto knife and this actually was a pretty tedious task. This took about an hour and a half, I think. And I, I realized it was going to take that long halfway through it. And I was just like, oh, yeah, this is going to be quick. No. This sort of operation is usually done with a special knife that looks like a chisel. And what you do is basically just press down really hard and push. And it, like, shaves away the leather and thins it out to almost see through towards the end. So when you fold it over and glue it on, it's not noticeable. It's You can't tell where the, uh, the edge is, which is pretty cool. But, yeah, I did it the hard way with, like, a, a small knife. And it actually took freaking ages and the, all that shit I uh, sighed onto the table and it actually blew all over my floor so I'm gonna have to clean that up at some point so just doing what I did last time with the covers cutting the corner so I can uh, bend them over nicely I screwed up a few things with this project uh, and part of the reason for that is because leather is pretty difficult to work with and you need like a special kind of chalk to uh, mark the back it's like a leather workers chalk and it doesn't work that well. Either I have the wrong chalk or God only knows what happened because it was pretty hard to get uh, precise delimitations of where the, the cardboard would be. So the edges are screwed up a bit, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to glue on some end papers just to hide the mistakes and make it more pretty. Plus, uh, the end paper actually has a pretty useful purpose. When you glue something to a piece of cardboard, it tends to warp. That's what it does. But when you glue something on both sides, it straightens itself out again. Almost entirely. Um, one advantage of this project is that you don't really need to wait for drying time. Basically, you glue on the covers, you can put those under a weight, and then you can you know, fix your pages, sew them on, and that's it. There's no in-between drying time, really. Like, you don't even have to dry the covers if you don't want to, but I, I usually prefer to do it just a little bit. So what I'm doing there is... Attaching a flap on the edge so it makes it easy to fold the uh, front cover over. This is where I screw up a bunch of stuff. I try to be smart and like fold the leather over so you don't see the the bend, etc. But hey, it's my first time doing something like this, so uh, it was bound to happen. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to try and cover up uh, mistakes as well as possible. And um, another key point in this uh, style of notebook is that it's basically reusable. Like once you, once you use all the pages inside, you can just uh, tear the string or cut the string away, remove the pages, punch holes in a new batch, and sew them back on, and that's it. You basically have a brand new notebook with uh, leather covers or whatever you choose to do. 
uh, these covers, yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna stay away from leather for a while because either it's not the right type of leather, which I don't think it is, because it's a bit too thick to to work with for this sort of stuff. But I mean, it it functions. You know, it, it did work, but not so well with the style of notebook because Japanese binding notebooks are usually either books that you read or um, like photo albums, portfolios, that sort of stuff. Things where you don't have to bend the page over completely. Like if you were to draw on a, the front of a page and then you want to draw on the back, it's kind of difficult with a style notebook because there's no clear spine that holds the pa pa like papers together. So if you pull on it too hard, there's a risk of either the papers ripping or the uh, the string ripping. But yeah, I'm using a five uh, five hole method. Usually, this is traditionally used with four holes, not any, for any particular reason. And uh, I'm not going to go into the style of stitching because it's um, there's plenty of tutorials out there that cover it in a more detailed way. But it's pretty, pretty simple. Like uh, Anyone can do it. I, I picked it up within two minutes of watching uh, someone else do it. So it's really no hard. Not that hard. Fumbling around there, trying to get the needle through. The cardboard plus leather makes it for for a lot of friction tension and you can't really do it that easily. I'm using a pair of pliers to do it, but eventually I manage and it ends up looking kind of neat. I really like this. It, it looks more like handmade and I don't know. It, it just looks pretty nice. So yeah, that's going to be it. Uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as the first one. Please uh, rate that shit. And I was going to make a logo video today, but unfortunately the guys that were supposed to give me feedback and approval uh, are slacking. So... I had to do something, and I didn't feel like drawing, so I did this instead. So hopefully you guys do enjoy it. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow when hopefully I'll be able to post a logo video, and I'll be trying to make uh, a few more videos this week and also prepare some content ahead so I can post something while I'm away in Boston and Vegas. But yeah, good night.